Hello, dear friends. Dallas County Master Gardener Association has been providing virtual meetings since April with almost 2,900 views on our YouTube channel. We appreciate your interest and support. Since we are unsure if we are attracting a public audience, our assumption is that it is important to provide virtual education to you, the members, that has a potential to educate other Master Gardeners beyond Dallas County and the public. Enjoy. And now for the announcement. Just a reminder to continue to send your dues to Tig Thompson, if paying by check, you will find his address in the VMS roster listing. If you'd like to pay by credit card, email Denise Struber. She will send a square invoice via your email for payment. Her email is also on the VMS roster. The benefits of being a member are especially focused on getting your money's worth. Some of the benef benefits are liability insurance while volunteering at projects, initial and anniversary name badges, and recognition awards for your community service. And now for shout outs. Thank you to all Master Gardeners and family and friends who donated to the Dallas County Master Gardener Association during North Texas Giving Day. We needed your help more than ever this year and you rose to the challenge. We reached our goal. If you donated, you will receive a handwritten note thanking you on behalf of the Master Gardeners of Dallas County. We promise to use your contribution to further our mission to provide research-based horticulture knowledge to Dallas County and beyond. I also want to give a shout out to our website team. I extend an invitation to all of you to visit the association website at dallasmastergardeners.org. The website team has developed an extraordinary homepage with articles from feature writers, monthly plant tips, question of the month, and project and speaker spotlights. The website team is dedicated to extending our mission to educate. We want to thank the team and especially its leader, Sandy Means Bannon. And now for safety in the garden. This month, we're doing it on stroke awareness. Become aware of stroke signs and symptoms, but especially you need to act fast. F is for the face. Does the face look uneven? A is for the arm, one arm hanging down. S is for speech. Is it slurred? And T is for time. You must act fast and call 911. If you're unsure about if someone is having a stroke, call 911 immediately. Let the paramedics determine the medical issue. And now for the COVID-19 update. Jeff Raska, Master Gardener Program Coordinator, has announced that program projects may now have up to 15 volunteers at one time. Please keep in mind that Dallas County remains in the orange zone, which means we should still exercise extreme caution and adhere to strict COVID guidelines. At-risk individuals are still advised that they are safer at home. In the wise words of Judge Jenkins, remember, just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do it. As numbers across Texas, the United States, and many other countries surge, it is critical that we all stay vigilant, especially for our members who are at risk. Precautions have not changed for master gardeners. We still should maintain strict social distancing of six feet or more. As stated in the Dallas County Master Gardener Association Safety Manual, we highly recommend that you at least have one buddy at the garden with you during volunteer hours for your safety. Wear a face mask. Avoid handshaking and all other unnecessary contact. 
wear gloves, and bring your own garden tools. Do not share tools or personal items with others. Please do not bring food to share with others. Any food brought to the project should be individually packaged for your own consumption. All master gardeners are responsible for monitoring their health and should remain at home if they are not feeling well or have a fever. Maintain hypervigilant personal hygiene, including proper hand washing with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Always carry hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol in the event that soap and water are not available. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. If you have traveled to high-risk areas, please self-quarantine for 14 days before volunteering. And the guidance for working indoors, follow the safety policy of all our collaborating partners, such as schools, Texas Discovery Garden, Dallas Arboretum, and county offices. Refrain from using shared office equipment when possible. If it's necessary to share equipment, disinfect after each use. The project spotlight this month is Lipscomb Elementary School in the heart of Old East Dallas. Lipscomb Elementary School already had a garden when Master Gardeners got involved in 2010. The goal of the garden is to expose children who live in a primarily urban environment to the natural world through direct contact in a living laboratory. Master Gardeners partner with the school's PTA and faculty members to support the garden's maintenance and growth. Due to the pandemic, all will join together to ensure the garden is teaching ready and beautiful when back face to face. In 2019, Lipscomb received a Monarch Heroes Garden Grant from the National Wildlife Federation to increase biodiversity or the number of different species present on the campus. They transformed part of the garden area into a butterfly garden with many host and nectar plants and installed five new high raised garden beds. The school also received a Whole Kids Foundation grant in May 2020 that will allow for the addition of outdoor learning elements such as large whiteboard, more outdoor seating for student lessons, and the repair of an existing gazebo. Thank you to Michelle Baus, project leader, and all volunteers for your dedication to Lipscomb Elementary School. This month, the Texas Master Gardener Association Award was presented to John Ellis, project leader, for Beyond Rose Rosette, Lake Cliff Park's Abelia Demonstration Garden. It is truly a labor of love for John and for the Dallas County Master Gardener volunteers who dug out diseased roses and replanted with abelias and pollinator plants. It clearly demonstrates how to overcome this terrible disease. As stated by Cynthia Jones, who wrote the award submission, Tragically, rose rosette disease has led to destruction of thousands of those much beloved roses in neighborhoods and public gardens throughout Dallas and virtually all of North Texas, which is considered the epicenter of this incurable disease. The master gardeners properly removed rose rosette disease infected roses, repaired existing drip irrigation systems, performed soil analysis by Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, with subsequent additions of necessary amendments, researched and selected 14 abelia varieties, 70 plants in all, sourced and acquired selected varieties, planted abelias, and mulched the newly planted beds. Preliminary planning and work were performed by Dallas County Master Gardeners and collaborative partners, Friends of Oak Cliff Parks. In addition, 48 volunteers from Methodist Dallas Medical Center assisted in the installation of the abil abilias. All volunteers who helped with the preparation and installation or maintenance of the Lake Cliff Abelia Demonstration Garden were educated on the proper disposal of infected roses and planting of the abilias. 
Visitors to Lake Cliff Park have easy access to ongoing passive learning thanks to an innovative signage with QR codes that link each sign to a specific internet page containing research-based information specific to each variety of abelias and to the abelias in general. The abelia demonstration garden will help our residents to overcome the loss of their roses, which were such a perennial favorite, and to embrace a more environmentally friendly alternative that adheres to the principles of earth kind landscaping and create gardens that are beautiful, low maintenance, sustainable, and once again, full of flowers, always and always. Another Texas Master Gardener Association Award was presented to Lisa Meyer for second place written education category, all about butterflies, youth education curriculum. The primary mission of the Dallas County Master Gardeners is to educate, including youth education. It is important to multiply the number of youth with access to butterfly education. The target audience for this curriculum was for educators, which included public school, private school, homeschool, and Master Gardener educators, including school garden project leaders. The goal was to provide comprehensive, cost-effective, and easy-to-use curriculum for ages 4 through 13. The curriculum promoted knowledge of butterflies and butterfly-friendly gardening practices to support the long-term survival of butterfly populations. Science-based information from Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, the University of Minnesota Monarch Lab, Journey North, Monarch Watch, an affiliate of Kansas Biological Survey, and Texas Discovery Gardens was reviewed to develop an education curriculum to achieve the project goals. The Texas Educational and Knowledge Skills, or TEKS, were reviewed to ensure curriculum concepts align with grade level knowledge, concepts, and skill requirements to facilitate public school use. The written materials included step-by-step -step lesson plans, supply lists, and learning aids for four modules. Let's Feed the Butterflies, Plant a Butterfly Garden Bucket, age four or pre-K. It's all about the wings, ages five through eight, grades kindergarten through second grade. Monarch Butterflies, a migration game, age nine through 11, grades third through fifth. And Habitat Hunt, find a location for a monarch way station, ages 12 and above, grades, grades six through eighth. The All About Butterflies curriculum was shared with 499 attendees, 206 parents, educators, and 293 youths at the Homeschool Day event sponsored by the Dallas Zoo that was held on April 8, 2019. The invitation to participate in the Zoo's Homeschool Day event resulted from positive feedback on the butterfly curriculum from the STEM educators that attended the Zoo's ExxonMobil Science Day event that was held in September 2018. The butterfly curriculum was used extensively by the Dallas County Master Gardener School Garden Project team at the Dallas Independent School District's Lakewood Elementary School in spring of 2019. We want to congratulate, congratulate Lisa for her dedication to educating children. Our presentation this month will be The Trinity Runs Through It. Focusing on the Trinity River Project through Dallas County. The speaker is Helen Dulac. Helen graduated from Texas A&M with a bachelor's in wildlife and fishery science, followed by a master's in environmental science from Texas Christian University. She is also a certified public communicator. She is a member of the Dallas Environmental Quality and Sustainability Department that splits her time between outreach and engagement and urban agriculture. She has worked for the city for 17 years, including several years 
in Dallas Water Utilities. She loves sharing green tips and gardening advice and has fun running the Green Dallas social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On this last segment of the meeting, we want to highlight community and school projects through pictures and videos. Master gardeners do make a difference. Each day to volunteer in a project or an event helps someone in our community. No matter if we do it in person or virtually, please be proud of what you do for Dallas County and beyond. We hope you enjoy the pictures and videos that demonstrate how Master Gardeners make a difference every day. Enjoy the virtual meeting. It is always a pleasure to bring it to you. It's ranging from A to Z. So anywhere from air quality to zero waste. Uh, so please visit our website, greendallas.net, uh, for more information and green tips. That's also how you can invite us to speak for free at any event that you host that's inside the city of Dallas. If you have questions for me or any of my coworkers, please email greendallas at dallascityhall.com and also follow us on social media. We are Green Dallas TX on Facebook and we are at Green Dallas on Twitter and Instagram. Also, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for being here today and offer you a thank you gift. So if you are interested, uh, you can send your contact information, including your mailing address, to greendallas at dallascityhall.com. Just mention that you are watching the Trinity presentation and you will get a free thank you gift. So with that, let's get started. I'm really excited to premiere this presentation with you. The Trinity River runs through it. So today, I hope this presentation helps put the Trinity River into context for you. It is a river and it's full of flora and fauna and beautiful places that we can enjoy and be proud of. But ultimately, this is a story about water and its power and how it's a driving force in North Texas. We all have our thoughts and experiences with the Trinity. We all see it differently and we often see it marred by trash. Because of that, the Trinity is not respected and is often compared to a ditch. Today, I'm gonna to show you some beautiful views of the Trinity and I hope I can give you a new perspective on the river. For example, this is how a professional photographer sees the Trinity. The Trinity starts at the Texas-Oklahoma border and flows all the way to the Gulf of Mexico across 700 miles of various landscapes. It's the third largest river in Texas and it's also regulated by the state of Texas. It's surprisingly large. It covers 18,000 square miles or 7% of the state's land area. It flows into Lake Livingston in Houston, then to Trinity Bay, then to Galveston Bay, which is connected to the Gulf of Mexico. Much further north is where Dallas is. We are in the upper Trinity Basin watershed, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. As the Trinity travels, streams or tributaries flow into it. In our area, the upper Trinity Basin, we have several streams or forks that join the Trinity. And you might've heard of them. They are Clear Fork, East Fork, Elm Fork, and West Fork. Some of these forks are used for recreation and some are sources for drinking water for local cities. Because the Trinity flows over 700 miles, it goes through several cities like Dallas and Fort Worth. The Trinity is a gathering place or collector of water. Water enters it from the forks, from storm drain systems, directly from the rain, from runoff off the land, and also as effluent or treated water from one uh, from two of Dallas's wastewater treatment plants. Even with all of that, when the Trinity is at normal flow, it is at its cleanest. And why is that? Any river traveling 700 miles through some of the largest cities in the United States will pick up pollution from urban runoff or stormwater. And that's where the pollution comes from. It doesn't come from the river, it comes from us. The city of Dallas has a lot of infrastructure in place to fight floods, to keep water in the river and to convey or move that water south. Most noticeable are the 30 foot tall levees on each side of the river known as the east and west levees. 
they run for 33 miles. The most numerous tools we have for fighting floods are the 67,000 storm drain inlets that remove rainwater or stormwater into 1,800 miles of the storm sewer system. We have 13 levee sump areas with 10 pump stations. A levee sump is a catchment basin. So the pumps we have are some of the most advanced for flood fighting in the world, and some of them are only three years old. What the pumps do is they pull water away from residential and business areas, then into the sumps, those catchment basins. From there, the water is pumped from the sump into the floodway. The city also has 11,000 drainage outfalls and 670 miles of creeks and channels, and that is a lot. Now, the city only manages 180 miles of that, which includes some really famous creeks, such as Turtle Creek, Mill Creek, Cedar Creek, and White Rock Creek. We also have the upper and lower chain of wetlands. Their purpose is to increase flood protection and to convey or move water. They help because water moving wa over water travels faster than water that has to move over rocks or around buildings. With all of this infrastructure in place, why do we still have flooding? Well, when we have those big, long, heavy rains, the lakes get full and water has to be released from them. That water, plus all of the rain, plus all of the storm water from Dallas and Fort Worth, enter the floodway at the same time. Now, one thing to remember is those levees are 30 feet tall. So when you hear reports that the Trinity is 31 feet out of its banks, it's actually only one foot out of the bank. And something else to note, from Dallas, the Trinity still flows nearly 500 miles to the Gulf of Mexico. And along the way, it provides a lot of water to people and livestock. So here is a map of the levees and the pump stations. The levees are the solid black lines and the pump stations are the red dots. Some of these stations have two pumps, plus there is a small pump at Rochester Park on the bottom right corner. That's Loop 12 running north and south on the left side of the map. So you can see the pumps are located near residential and business districts. This is a photo of the Pavajo wetland. The Trinity River is in the top left corner covered by the line of trees. Just like a real wetland, sometimes the Pavajo holds water and sometimes it's dry. The Pavajo wetland in Dallas is in the Dallas floodway near Trammell Crow Park. In this area, there's access to parking and access to the Trinity Skyline Trail. There's also access to a 10 kilometer loop, which is a combination of traditional trails, levee top trails, and river crossings under the Westmoreland Bridge and the Sylvania Avenue Bridge. It's a great place to explore, but there's no lighting at night. So now let's talk about the history of the Trinity. It was a wild river that was unpredictable and often flooded. The Caddo tribe lived along the river long before the Europeans came. They recorded floods in their oral history. In 1687, French explorer Robert Cavalier de La Salle named the river, River of Canoes. Then just a few years later, Spanish explorer Alfonso de Leon searches for the French outpost and rediscovers the river, naming it the Most Holy Trinity. And that's the name that stuck. So let's fast forward to 1836, and that's when a lot of settlements and advancements became, uh, came in this area. Just a few years after that, in 1841, Dallas was founded by John Neely Bryan. Then just a few years after that, in 1852, boat commerce began but the river was only navigable up to Pointer's Bluff in Navarro County. It was the hope that boats, uh, that the Trinity could carry boats all the way to Houston and to the Gulf of Mexico, but unfortunately, they could only make it to Navarro County. The photo of the barge on the left was taken in 1907, one, uh, one year before the big flood of 1908. This is when the river was used for used for limited commerce, but traveling the Trinity was 
very slow. It could take months to reach Porter's Bluff. Now the photo on the right shows how the river snaked and came to the edge of downtown Dallas. The river was eventually moved and straightened out. There was even an idea of concreting the river all the way to Houston, but that was over 400 miles and way too expensive. Now, fun fact, if you travel south on I-45, you'll notice that the bridges you drive over are very tall. They were built that way in hopes that there would be ship traffic on the Trinity. So the history of floods continue to occur as Dallas grew. In 1908, there was a 10 inch rain event that occurred in our basin that resulted in 11 deaths, uh, much infrastructure damage, and it actually cut off the city. It divided the east and west sides and the river actually cut them off from each other. And then because of that, 4,000 people lost their homes and uh, all of West Dallas was underwater and much of downtown Dallas. I mean, could you imagine if that happened today? Well, back in 18, uh, 1908, the city leaders decided they needed to change the course of the river. Because remember, it snaked right by downtown. It was actually really close to the Red Courthouse right by Houston Street. So here are some more historical photo. Uh, this is a comparison of what the Trinity looks like during a flood. Uh, one was taken in 1928, and then there, the bottom one was in 2015. You can see how the river was near downtown and how it looked, uh, and now how it looks like with all the meanders or bends taken out. And also with those 30 foot levees in place to keep the water contained. Now the river, is in a V or U shape. It's narrow at the bottom, and the bottom of the river is called the floodway. And as it rises along those levees, the channel gets wider and wider so it can hold more and more water. The floodway looks small when you drive across it because you're on a bridge that's 60 or 70 feet high. If you actually go down into the floodway, which there are accesses down into the floodway, you will see that it's a huge space surrounded by those 30 foot levees. This is a photo of the Santa Fe Trestle Trail in Dallas at 8th Street in Santa Fe. There was a working railroad track there. Uh, we talked about there's a lot of different floods that have happened. So during some of the floods, the city would actually park trains on that trestle to try to help stabilize it and give it weight so it wouldn't wash away in the floods but you can see that it was still damaged by this flood. And there's actually still part of the trestle left, but unfortunately it catches litter and creates a dam and slows down the flow of the river. So the 1908 flood prompted the city to do something. There were a variety of plans, but what happened was the river was moved straightened out and the levees added. The Corps of Engineers helped the city and rebuilt the levees that were there. So today, the city owns the floodway and all of the infrastructure and works in partnership with the Corps to manage it according to federal guidelines. The levees that we have today were either built in the 50s or the 90s. Now let's talk about what makes up the Trinity River and where does it go? You will see that there are, you'll see that there's a lot of water that passes through Dallas, which creates a lot of opportunities for it to collect pollution. And to help, the, help you with this part, just remember, the Clear Fork flows into the West Fork. The West Fork joins the Elm Fork, and they actually form the main trunk of the Trinity. So the West Fork and the Elm Fork are what really uh, form the most of the Trinity. So let's talk about each of these forks. So we're gonna start with the Clear Fork, and that begins north of Weatherford and flows southeastward through Lake Weatherford and Benbrook Lake Reservoirs. It joins the West Fork near downtown Fort Worth. The West Fork begins uh, and travels, it begins in Archer County and it travels 145 miles to Fort Worth. 
The Elm Fork begins south of St. Joe in eastern Montague County and travels 85 miles through Cook and Denton counties to converge or meet up with the West Fork of the river just west of downtown Dallas. And these waters also pass through Lake Louisville. The East Fork is a little bit of an outlier. It's a little bit different. It begins near South Central Grayson County and runs south for 85 miles. It eventually crosses into Collin County about seven miles from McKinney and enters Lake Levon and then Lake Ray Hubbard before joining the Trinity River just southeast of Dallas. So the East Fork actually doesn't join the Trinity until south of Dallas. So this is a photo of the Elm Fork treatment pond. And this is an area that's always filled with trash and tree debris due to the water moving in and out of it. And it's usually in flood conditions. This is a place where water has a chance to slow down and heavy sediment, trash, and debris can settle or fall out of the water before it's purified into drinking water. Dallas Water Utilities has the Elm Fork Purification Plant near Carrollton. So our water, storm water, is so important to life as we know it that it takes a wide variety of structures and technology to capture it, to convey it, and to ensure that we have adequate water for a growing population. We've already talked about the floodway. We've talked about stormwater infrastructure. We've talked a little bit about the wetlands and the pump stations. Let's talk about two new things, the Mill Creek Tunnel, which will be finished in two years, and some new projects, which will be finished in six to seven years. The Mill Creek Tunnel is a $300 million project. It's a five mile long tunnel that, that will provide 100 year flood protection for 2,200 residents and businesses. The line runs from Barber Street almost to Baylor Hospital on Gaston. So what you see is a picture of Big Text. Big Text is a 220 foot long drill that bores the tunnel at 37.7 feet for the first 9,000 feet. Then it will bore at 32 feet for the remainder of the distance. This project will take a total of five years. Big Text runs 24 hour shifts and the anticipated completion date is in 2023. So this is the drill that makes the Mill Creek Tunnel. And this is such a big project, it actually has its own website, millcreektunnel.com. Big text is pictured here next to a photo of the lower chains of wetlands because the way we manage the water can look very different. There are many different methods of man-made flood fighting, including tunnels. And then there are more natural ways such as wetlands. What we have are man-made wetlands that provide a host of benefits. They provide storage for the floodwaters and help reduce flooding. Wetlands have been proven to improve water quality. And of course they provide wonderful habitat for a multitude of wildlife. They also maintain ecosystem productivity. Many wetlands are breeding grounds for fish and birds. They provide wonderful recreational opportunities. There is some wonderful bird watching in our area and uh, the Trinity is also really famous for gar fishing. Uh, wetlands also improve our water supply and they provide just fun and great opportunities for education for everyone, for adults and children. Dallas is doing all of this to protect our current population and to meet our future water needs. Now, let's bring this back around to water. Dallas, like many other major cities, was founded near water. As people, we're drawn to water. We need water to survive, but we also enjoy being near it. Look at how popular White Rock Lake is. It's known as the jewel of Dallas. And there are more beautiful water bodies in Dallas, including Cedar Creek, the Pioneer Plaza Waterfall, 
Turtle Creek, White Rock Creek, and Lake Cliff Park, just to name a few. After telling the powerful story of water, we can feel like there's nothing we can do for it. However, the river does need our help. We can have beautiful places like the upper wetlands, but each of us needs to do our part to keep it that way. And together, we can make a huge difference in what can seem like an overwhelming problem. Here are photos from some tr trash cleanups. Just look at how many tires were removed. Now, this one person didn't pull out all those tires by himself. Never think that you are alone. There are many people who care about the Trinity River and want to improve the quality of all of our water. Because stormwater is our water, we all have a responsibility to keep it clean. Even during these times, there are many ways our actions can improve or even negatively impact our water quality. One of the biggest ways to help is to keep anything that can be pollution from leaving your property. That includes bacteria from pet waste, grass, and grass clippings and leaves that can clog a storm drain, and car fluids leaking onto driveways or in parking lots. When we can again gather, that's gonna be a perfect time to participate or even organize a cleanup in your neighborhood. Anytime you're out walking or hiking, this is an opportunity to remove litter that can end up in our waters. Uh, another option is my department has a storm drain marking program. You can volunteer to mark the storm drain inlets in your neighborhood with a placard. This is great for an individual or small groups. All the supplies are provided and you can mark as many inlets as you want. And something else that you can do now is to stay in the know about stormwater and other environmental events by signing up for our digital newsletter on our website, greendallas.net. Every year, the City of Dallas and the Trinity Park Conservancy hold a Trinity River photo contest. I wanna share some of the photos from past contests and encourage you to enter this year's contest. It closes on October 12th, so you have plenty of time to get that perfect shot. Please visit trinityparkconservancy.org to see all of the contest details and rules. One of the benefits of wetlands is providing wildlife habitat. Dallas is on the migratory route for many birds, and these wetlands are great locations for bird watching. The blue birds are showy egrets and great egrets at sunset. The light in the forest casts a shadow on them, making them look blue. The one preening is a snowy egret. This was taken in the Great Trinity Forest at the crescent shaped wetlands right by the Macomas Landfill. This beautiful photo of the sunset was taken in the floodway uh, really far west from here. This shot is a time-lapse photography of the waterfall at Pioneer Plaza, a natural waterfall that's in downtown Dallas. The colors here make this look like artful trash, but it is all trash and debris in an algae bloom. Despite all the beauty we have around us, we always leave our mark. There is always the need to teach others so that we can enjoy a cleaner and better Trinity. For over 100 years, the region has envisioned envisioned a cleaner and more natural river along all of the water bodies in the city. The Trinity is a regional river and the North Central Texas Council of Governments is leading a re regional cooperation and shared vision. Because really, we all want the same thing. We all want a safe, clean, enjoyable, natural, and diverse river. But closer to home, what can you do? 
What can make a big impact is not to litter or dump trash or debris. Take advantage of the city's trash and bulk pickups. You can take electronics, large appliances, old TVs, and even tires to the McComas Bluff landfill or any of the transfer stations. And as soon as it's safe, we will restart the BOPA program, which is a mobile collection for batteries, motor oil, paint, and antifreeze that goes to various locations around the city. And also here you can see a uh, the addresses and where all the transfer stations are located. Plus, there are things that we can do every day, like picking up after our pets on all walks and from our yard at least once a week. Use personal protective equipment and safely pick up litter on walks. Uh, make sure you dispose of your PPE in the trash so it doesn't become litter. If you pick up 10 pieces of litter for five days, that's 50 pieces of litter that won't end up in our water. If you do that for one year, you, by yourself, have removed 2,600 pieces of litter. Now, if 10 of us do this for one year, that's 260,000 pieces over a quarter million pieces of trash that have been collected by 10 people in one year. Now, there's also a lot of things that we think are natural that can actually uh, become a pollutant because they don't belong in our water, such as grass clippings and leaves. They can clog storm drains, and if they make it through the storm drains, they actually will decompose in the water and actually take oxygen out of the water, leaving less for fish. And that can sometimes result in a fish kill. So if you have leaves or grass clippings, uh, instead of blowing them into the street, uh, the best thing to do is to compost them. So you can have free amendments for your garden and your landscape. And when you do use fertilizers, herbicides, or pesticides, please follow the directions and don't use more than you need. Even organic products can blow off of yards and end up in our waters where they don't belong. Uh, when you're ready to wash your car, consider using a car wash. Many car washes collect the water and it's filtered and then used again. Plus, car washes have what's called an oil water separator that can remove the grease and oil that come off of cars, keeping that from entering into our storm drain system. And of course, many practices you already do help keep our storm water clean. When you recycle and use things, it keeps things from becoming litter. Uh, and if you do have a clogged storm drain in your neighborhood, please call and report it to 311 or use the Our Dallas smart device app to report it. So in conclusion, I want to leave you with some motivation and remind you that you are not alone. I also want to share my watershed story. I've worked for the city for 17 years, and I never went to enjoy the floodway, the wetlands, or the trails. Uh, a little bit before all of this started, my coworker took me to a couple of these places, and I have to admit, I was amazed. I returned with my husband and we enjoyed great scenery in the middle of the fourth largest city in the United States. I'm going to show a quick video of all the things I saw, the good things, the bad things, and I wanna share it all with you. But before I do that, um, not everybody can help pull an abandoned boat out of the water, but whatever you do, it will truly make a difference. This photo was taken at the I-20 gateway and the horse trails fishing pond. I wanna thank each of you for spending your day with me today. And I wanna remind you that I wanna offer each of you a thank you gift for uh, being a part of this presentation. And your thank you gift is actually a set of note cards that are adorned with photos from the Trinity River Photo Contest. So if you're interested in receiving those note cards, please send your contact information along with your mailing address to greendallas at dallascityhall.com and they will be mailed to you.
All right. So hopefully, Jessica, you might have to tell me if the video is playing. So far, it's not playing. Okay. Let me just pause that and reshare my screen. Hold on here. All right, how about now? Yeah, it's playing, it's a little laggy, but we're seeing something. All right.
Thank you for that, Helen. Well, that was very serene. <laughs> All right. So I'm hoping that there are a bunch of questions that we can talk about today. What was oh. the email address for the cards? I can type that in. Absolutely. It is greendallas at dallascityhall.com. And please include your mailing address and we will get those out to you shortly. And you're going to be really pleased with them. They're uh, like four by six note cards and they have some beautiful photos of the Trinity River, uh, of birds, uh, different insects, everything that you can find in the river. Oh, and it looks like we have a person who is an artist that made a field guide to wildlife in Dallas last year, and she shared the link for it. Well, uh, thank you, Cynthia. That's beautiful. I am looking forward to sharing that and also looking at it. Um, I think one of the things that maybe Cynthia and also just myself from my very amateur video that I shared is that it is amazing what you can see without leaving the Dallas city limits. We have the great Trinity Forest that's in the middle of our city. And there are deer and all sorts of birds, uh, even some rare birds. Uh, there's, you know, if you like snakes and amphibians, just about anything that you like, you can come across uh, it in our city limits. And it's a wonderful and valuable resource that we have that a lot of people either don't know or uh, have it just it had taken the time to enjoy it, just like my case. I mean, 17 years, a city employee. And just earlier this year, I finally went out and saw all of those things. I mean, it, and like I mentioned, there's flora and fauna. So if you like birds, if you like plants, there's also some native orchids that grow in some parts of the forest. And there are some really pretty places near the Trinity River Audubon Center. Uh, there are where you can enter the trails from there and also uh, near uh, the Joppy Preserve. And especially at the Joppy Preserve and actually also by uh, the Trinity River Audubon Center, uh, those are paved trails. So they're very easy uh, to walk on trails and they can be enjoyed by, you know, bring out the family and you can enjoy yourself. All right, so we have some questions about uh, are there plans to provide more nature via signage at the Trinity River? In, in, okay, so they're um, at Rochester Park. So I don't know if you remember the map I showed you that had the pump, uh, the levees and the pump stations. So there is Rochester Park. And they, we actually, the city actually set up some uh, signage there, some interpretive signs. And unfortunately, they were vandalized and vandalized severely. Uh, so that was actually going to be part of a, um, a series of signs, of interpretive signs that could be used for education. But after the vandalism, uh, there's been some second thoughts on that. And, oh, is the best way to volunteer for groups that pick up trash? Uh, so there are several. Uh, one that is very, uh, that has been around for a very long time and, and, and uh, picked up tons and tons of trash, literally, is called Groundwork Dallas. And Groundwork also uh, helps with some of our trails. So if you're interested in working on the trails and keeping some of the trails um, safe and comfortable, Groundwork Dallas is a great group. If you live near the White Rock Lake area, there is a group called For the Love of the Lake. That's For the Love of the Lake, and they hold cleanups at White Rock Lake. Oh, and thank you, Jessica, for putting in some of those um, links. And then also uh, the Trinity Park Conservancy that helps host the photo contest, they're holding virtual trash bashes the third Saturday of every month. And what that is, is that you actually can go out on your own or maybe with a family member and pick up trash, but you can take pictures of it and record it. And everybody who participates they record all of that together and to show how that combined effort of individuals working together can accomplish great things. And so that's trinitypartconservancy.org. 
uh, every third Saturday. And so there's going to be uh, one coming up in August. So if there are, I'm happy to take any other questions. Oh, well, thank you. I do want to thank each and every one of you for spending your lunch hour with us. I hope that uh, this was a memorable story and that you have a new appreciation and maybe even a little bit of respect for the Trinity and what's available here in our area. And um, there are plenty of trails that you can visit, and especially once it gets cooler. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy. All right, thank you all for attending. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. When I was researching it this week, I read how this plant is really for a moist area. And the more water it gets, the taller it gets. Well, the fact of the matter is, we don't water this plant at all. And it's five foot three inches tall. Uh, I've seen it taller in, at my house and here, but it's still, I love it for its structure. It's kind of past its prime now. It, it blooms like mid-May to mid-June. And it always has this big, rosette of leaves at the bottom so even in the winter so what I have realized is this is not a good plant to put on the edge of your garden because then you can see all the dead leaves at the bottom of the foliage rosette at my house it has plants around it so I never see those so if you plant it at home think about that um, it attracts lots of pollinators, but I've never seen another plant come up. So evidently, it's not reproducing through seeds in our locations. Maybe it would if it had more water, but we're not going to know the answer to that in this garden.